Welcome to another Tactical Fly Fisher on the Water tutorial. Devin Olson here. This video comes from a high country stream that Connor and I were fishing a couple of weeks ago. And we decided that we would just pick a random stretch of water that we came upon, break it down as I began to fish it, and help you see how I covered it. The piece of water we ended up recording on was this corner pool. The pool made a hard left turn, which created some interesting hydrology, as you'll see in the video. If you like the video, please give us that thumbs up and then leave us a comment below and we'll be sure to include similar reading the water style videos in the future. Let's get to the fishing. Okay, I'm gonna start at the back of this pool because I always wanna work back to front, near to far and shallow to deep. So I'm starting at the tail out. I've got a dry dropper on Connor's rod here, just a contact two Euro rod with a Euro leader. And I'm gonna try and get some of the fish that are in this, if there's any in this slower bit, there's one. So in this slower part of the, the pool, I'm trying to see if I can suspend flies and get a little better drift in there. And then as we work into the faster water, I'll get the, the, the Euro Nymph rod out. Little rainbow, see you later, buddy. So I'm just making a fairly short cast. I don't want to go too far up in there. I want to focus on the back first, get as many fish as I can from there, and then just work my way up. I've got about two and a half, three feet maybe of dropper length below the dry fly with, with the front end loader caddis is my dry fly. And then I have a three millimeter inverting bead um, blowtorch on for the nymph. That's what that rainbow just ate. And if I go too far up in the pool, especially to the right side, there's kind of a big eddy at the top and my rig's just gonna get sucked into that. So I'm actually gonna need to change positions before I fish that. definitely noticed that as I made a cast to the far side where there's faster current that uh, my rig was moving a lot faster than I expected and the nymph was actually outpacing the dry fly so I'll probably need to use the standard nymph rig over there and forego the dry dropper and all in all actually it's it's moving quite a bit faster than I expected in there a lot of uh, corner pools like this where you get, there we go, there's another fish, another little rainbow. These corner pools where you get the current coming in almost at a 90 degree angle, um, you can get a lot of turbulence and you can get sort of what I think of as an undertow where the currents on the bottom of the river are actually faster than the top. So another nice little wild rainbow there. Pretty colors, white tip fins. Oh, just missed one there. There we go. <laughs> well, lost that guy. Lots of little rainbows in here so far. It's taken a while for my nymph to actually get tight to the dry fly. You can look at your dry fly and if when it's on a tag like this, if it's got tension, then the dry fly will kind of prop up a little bit and you'll also see the tippet that's near it sink quickly through the water. And, but in a lot of that turbulent current, that nymph must just not be sinking very quickly and my dry fly is floating through there without tension a lot. So I may abandon that for the uh, far bit of the pool there quicker than I anticipated. Let's come over to the side a little bit here and hit some of the slow stuff with the dry dropper because that's where it excels. There's an eddy 
Nice deep eddy right on the corner of the pool here. We'll suspend that nymph through it and see what happens. There we go. So when the nymph and the dry fly just sit in that dead water like that, yes, you can have fish that'll come and grab it eventually. But if they've sat there for a while and they haven't done anything, you haven't caught a fish, I start giving it the jiggle drift. So all I did for that rainbow was lifted my rod up and down a few inches a couple of times. And it wasn't even enough to move the dry fly. The dry fly never moved since it was on the tag and it could just kind of pivot there. The dry fly never moved on the surface, but I knew that I was moving the nymph below and that fish came over and ate the nymph as it was dancing under the water a little bit. So in dead water like that, if you haven't hooked any fish in a while, that's a good strategy to make it look alive and make the fish want to come eat your, your rig. And today, with the uh, extra turbidity that's flowing in the river here, I don't have to worry as much about getting over the fish or getting too close to them. If the water was a lot clearer, I'd probably be on my knees right now. But we've got cloudy skies and pretty turbid water. So there's not a whole lot of reason. Oh, there's another fish. <laughs> Jumping little rainbow. Uh, there's not a lot of reason to worry, as you can see, because I'm pretty darn close to where I just caught that fish. And he didn't spook. Oh, tons of spots on this little wild rainbow. Beautiful. Nothing big yet, but that's all right. We're also in a pool that's right by the road, so this one may get hit a little bit more than and some. Having not fished here before, I didn't, I don't really know what to expect anyway. We did fish a little bit last night and caught a few nice browns in addition to the little rainbows, but uh, so far in this pool, just the rainbows have played ball. So yeah, floating a dry dropper through the eddy like this isn't exactly the most engaging way to fish, <laughs> but it is effective. That dry dropper can just sit there and suspend that nymph. And it's water that's pretty complicated. It's tight enough, um, the, the rotation on it, that you can't even really get a standard nymph drip through there and rotate it with the rod very easily. But if you just kind of let that dry fly lead it along with the outstretched gyro rod you can high stick it all off the water and it gets a pretty good drift i definitely have not touched bottom or even gotten close in there from what i can tell though i don't know how deep it is because i can't the water's not clear enough to oh missed one water's not clear enough to really tell but it looks pretty there's a precipitous drop off beyond some sticks right here and so with this two and a half or three feet of tippet I'm not, not getting down. So we will try that here in a little bit with the nymph rod. All right, I think I'm gonna make that my last drift here with the dry dropper and the eddy. We'll see what happens with it. No love. All right, time to switch to my nymph rod. And there again, I'm gonna start at the back and then work my way to the front and go close first or near and then far. And there's, whoo! <laughs> is that a little brookie? <laughs> yes, that is a little brookie. Impressive. <laughs> Apparently little brookies like light brights. And I gotta put some more wax on here. I have probably about three feet max, maybe about a little less than that from my 
cider wax to my top dropper. So this is a decently long rig for a river of this size because I have another 20 inches from there to my point fly. Okay, back with a fairly short cast again. I'm just putting it in the back third of the pool. And I took bottom. Might be a little heavy and a little long for the, the full tail out here. Tick to bottom again, over there just a little further away. I'm gonna try a couple casts a little further now. See where my weight is behaving. Like, uh, am I getting deep enough or am I getting too deep? And then I can go about making some adjustments from there. So far it seems though, that, that water that's on the, the other half of the pool, a little bit further away from me, that's faster on the bottom than it is on the top. It's got that weird undertow thing. And a lot of times in pools like this, there aren't fish that hold in that because it's actually taking more energy to sit at the bottom than it is at the top if the, if the current's faster. So they'll find the, the parts of the pool that are less turbulent. So I'm gonna focus for a little bit here on the center. And yeah, it's, I've got an undertow even right there. When you do have a bit of an undertow like that, sometimes an inverted drift is the best way to get them. So instead of just moving your cider through with your rod tip, I basically just keep the rod tip still and I'm letting the cider pass and it, those flies will arc down before they arc back up and you can get slow and deep in that turbulent water. Okay, nobody threw the back half here, so that does tell me that the currents in that area just aren't nearly as favorable to trout as they look. Okay, so I'm gonna try a few now through the top of the pool. There's a fish, a little, little fish, another little rainbow. So it appears to me after the way my drifts have behaved that, uh, and, and looking at the surface of the current, there's a big boiling current here at the back. Um, I think I, there's a big upwelling because it's hitting that far bank, bouncing off and then swelling up. You get that helical rotation here. So it's hitting that far bank, coming across and boiling back up. So you've actually got faster current in the back half of the pool here on the bottom of the river. So I'm gonna focus on the top, along the edges of the eddy here for a bit, where I just caught that last fish. And then before we jump all the way across to the, the head of the pool, I'll run back through with a different fly. There's another little rainbow. Whoop! <laughs> well, he wanted in the net. <laughs> oh, that's really pretty. Okay. So yeah, they do seem to be concentrated in this less turbulent current here in the eddy. So we'll focus a few more drifts through there. The top of the pool here must be pretty darn deep because I've drifted, drifted through there a couple times now. Haven't shown signs of ticking bottom and uh, I was ticking in the back half. Yeah, it's just hustling once I get to that rear half. It's like someone hits the gas pedal and my drift just takes off. So. There's definitely some fast current down there. Oh, <laughs> this guy took the paradigm. <laughs> 
See you later. So what I'm doing for this drift right now, I'm actually kind of casting back upstream, but I'm facing directly across. Oh, there's a little better fish. Lots of pretty wild bows. So yes, I'm, I've got this seam of current that's coming off this one boulder up here. And as it drops off, that, that seam is still a little bit slower. It's forming the hard seam between that run that's coming in and the pool. And so I'm tracing my flies around that seam, expecting fish to be hugging it. So I'm actually casting kind of like back behind me, but then letting, I'm not moving the rod, I'm just letting the current catch the flies up. And then once the cider kind of gets directly in line with where my rod tip is, that's when I'll start to follow. And I might give it a little jiggle drift, just like I did with the dropper as well, once it gets in the dead water. Give it one more right in the eddy there. Try and get it as deep as I can. And then we'll probably switch to some slightly heavier flies and see what it takes to get down in there a little deeper. Because I haven't shown, I still haven't shown any sign that I'm near the bottom in there. It's moving around like I'm drifting up in the current off the bottom. So I'm gonna pull this fly off. We're gonna actually gonna play a, a cleanup game with the mop, pun intended. I'm gonna put on a pretty heavy one here. I had a three mil nymph on there, but I still have the two and a half mil inverting, both of them inverting beads. Um, so I had a three mil nymph on the point, that kind of Drake nymph, and then I have that two and a half mil inverting bead light bright paragon on the dropper. I'm gonna switch out and put a four mil mop on the point. And we're gonna try and dredge a little bit deeper here and see if we can pick up one or two before we move to the top of the run here, or the, the run that's coming into the pool. Okay, so I now have that heavy mop on. I'm not backing up and starting where I began. I've already seen that the tail out probably doesn't hold a lot of fish because of that weird turbulent undertow that it's got. So there's not really a reason to go back and try again at the back end, at least in my mind. So I'm gonna focus here on the upper part of the pool and see if I can get one or two more that didn't take with the, the lighter rig. Did tick bottom there, so I did get down. And yeah, I mean, once I make a cast out there that's further away, my drift is just accelerating really rapidly. My cider wax is taken off and it's moving downstream faster than what you'll see on the surface. And that's a pretty good sign to me You've got that turbulent undertow or the, the current is so fast that there might not be fish that hold there. If they do hold, then that type, that part of the pool there, it's actually easier for them to hold suspended in the upper half of the column than it is down near the bottom. Yep, there's one more little rainbow. That guy took the paradigm. Okay, well. If he took, I'm gonna give it a couple more casts then. No more love so far. Okay, well, looks like there wasn't much to clean up, uh, <laughs> at least not with this rig. So, 
I'm going to switch back to what I had and we're going to focus on the run that's coming in on the far side here. There's a seam in the dead center of the run that's a little bit slower than the rest of it. There might be some fish in there and then there's a soft bit of water on the far bank. All right, so I've, I've taken off that mop. I've put on, the, uh, there's one seam right here that I want to cover that's right coming down the, the set, the dead center of the run that's coming into the pool. And I need something that sinks a little bit better through that heavy water than the mop, because the mop tends to sink pretty slow, even though I had it heavy. So I put, on, I put back on a blowtorch, and I put on a three and a half millimeter inverting bead version. And this is a seam that definitely could hold fish, but might not. The water, when I took a temperature just before we started fishing, was 60, oop, there we go. It was 60, almost 63 degrees, a high 62. This is a nice fish. I think this is a brown. Um, so, they're willing to get up into that fast water at the heads of the pools when it's kind of in the upper end of that prime range there. Yeah, a little nicer brown here. Took the Perdigon, even in the middle of that heavy rip. So that's cool. Now, you may notice that I fought that fish, what looked like downstream of me, um, which is the opposite of what I would normally tell you to do if you've watched my fishing videos, but there's that brown. But what's actually happening there, I've got an eddy right here. So when I brought it down here, the current's actually coming back at me. So that is upstream uh, from my frame of reference. And it's certainly a lot easier to land a fish right there than it is out in that current. Let's see if anybody else is in that seam. He was kind of at the back end as it starts to drop off instead of up near the, the head here. And I'm keeping my cider above the water here. If you drop your cider, in, especially in water like that, it's really fast. Because it's thicker than your tippet, it's gonna grab current and it's gonna accelerate your drift and cause drag. So you won't really wanna have your cider out of the water to eliminate that. Cool. Well, it doesn't seem like there's anybody else. But nice to get a brown out of this pool at least after all those rainbows. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the slower water on the bank here, but I've got too heavy of a rig for that for sure. The near edge is still pretty fast and deep. So I'm going to put back on the three millimeter version of that Drake Nymph I had, just cause it's on my drying patch here. So I'll still have a two and a half millimeter Paradigon on the dropper and a three millimeter on the point in that Drake Nymph. All right, so I just switched. I'm a little bit lighter than I was. I'm still gonna probably be too heavy for the bank. So I'm gonna hit the seam on that softer side first with this rig. And if I tick bottom, as I get closer, I'll pull off some weight. Hmm. I went right through the honey. But nobody there so far. So that's kind of surprising. That softer bank, I mean, maybe it, I can't really tell what the depth is like with the turbidity that we have right now, but maybe it just doesn't drop off enough for them to want to be there. But a soft bank like that, especially with some branches that are overhanging, normally that's a pretty solid bet to hold a fish or two. 
All right, before I call it quits, I'm just gonna cut off my two and a half millimeter paragon so that I just have a single nymph. And we're gonna get a little bit tighter back under that bush and then along the bank here. This drift I'm gonna put right under those branches. Of course, the wind kicked up. Always nice of it. We got a few thunder bumpers around, so that's to be expected. There we go. That might be the, the other smallest. It's another brookie. I think it's the second smallest fish of the day. <laughs> See you later, rookie. <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, looks like there weren't as many fish up here as I expected, but I got one little brookie under that tree. Thanks for watching this tactical fly fisher video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. And then come on over to our website, tacticalflyfisher.com. And there we have a store to supply any of the fly fishing and fly tying gear that you need. Thanks for watching.